I know you're an accomplished horseman and swordsman and all of that. The people that work with you say you're among the best they've ever seen do the sword work, first of all. I, I know um, Mr. Anderson said. Bob Anderson. Yeah, Bob Anderson uh, said, without doubt, the best he's ever seen. And he's a legend in that. He's amazing. He's, am he's passed away, unfortunately. But I got to work with him twice. The Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy and also El Atriste, which was a 17th century uh, Spanish movie, big production for Spain, a uh, period piece, and he was the sword master, because they were looking, they don't have such a tradition in Spain like they do in France or, or England or the United States of doing these epic, you know, period pieces with battles and, you know, costume dramas. And, um, and so they don't have, I mean, they have good fencers and stuff, but as far as sword work in movies, he said, well, who would you recommend? I said, well, you, can you hire anybody you want? And I said, well, Bob Anderson. And, and I said, but he's getting up there, and I don't know if he's doing any more. Um, he said, well, ask him. We'd love to have him. Uh, and I know he's done some movies here. In the 50s, he was participating as, as a you know, swords guy on some of the big American productions. You know? um, and so I went to meet Bob. He was uh, in Hollywood, and he, was, he had just left. I think it was a, one of the sequels, or maybe Zorro, part two. And they, he had left under circumstances. He didn't like the way they were doing it. He felt that it wasn't like sword play of that time. There was too much, he said, too much ninja stuff in it, or something. <laughs> He's probably right. It was like, you know. It was, and so he just, he, they parted ways amicably, and he said, that's it, I'm done. I said, well, I got this great story, you know, that we're going to do in Spain, and I know you've worked in Spain, and you'd get to do it exactly the way you want. He goes, what is it? Is it, uh, you know, sword and dagger, 17th century? I go, yeah, you know, rapier and dagger. And he said, and will they make it look like people, like you're really killing people? And I said, I think that's the idea. <laughs> no, because I mean, really, no ninja stuff. I go, I don't think there's going to be any ninja stuff. But um, I think you'd have a free reign. He goes, well, finally, if I could do it exactly the way I want to. And so he did that. That was his last movie he did, and he did an amazing job. And they worshipped him. The day he left, he was, there was a few days left after without sword play, so he was going home to England. He wasn't well, actually. Uh, he was in a wheelchair a lot. I mean, this is... We're here, right? There's not a thing. There's not like an 8 o'clock show or something. I have a story that's really nice about him. <laughs> Bob Anderson comes in, right? And the guy who was bringing in, you know, like all the opponents, they got real fencers, like the national fencing, one of the national fencing coaches brought in all these really good fencers. And one of them was this amazing, he was a really gifted guy, like Olympic level fencer. And, um, and Bob was, at that point, he was in a wheelchair, and he was like watching. You know, some days he could get up, but he was very frail. And, and he's watching, and he had a translator, because none of these guys really spoke English. And we're doing a scene where I'm facing down a bunch of pirates, basically, and, and, uh, or buccaneers, and it was like a kind of a grim fight, and I'm being backed into a corner by all these guys, and then there's one guy in particular who was really nasty and very fast, and so. Um, and he goes, cut. And then he says to the translator, tell, tell, him, tell the guy, tell the, the, the bad guy, the real, you know, the main bad guy to come over. And he was this fencing star, you know, athlete. And he looks at him in his wheelchair and like Bob's arms at this point were like that big around. And he was like really um, pretty emaciated, but he was, had his wits about him. And he goes, um, I was watching your sword play and, um, and the guy's translating. And I think that, I think you should, you should rotate uh, cl um, clockwise, like about an eighth of an inch. Uh, what's that in centimeters? Uh, something, and then you'll, you'll find you'll have much better results. <clears throat> and the guy translated the guy, and the guy sort of smiled, you know, benevolently. And he you know, says, thank you, master, but um, it served me quite well so far in my grip. You know, I'm, I'm hot shit, basically. And uh, <laughs> he didn't say that, but I mean, he was very polite, but it was, and Bob goes, Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Okay. Um, bring me a sword. And so he, they bring him a sword. He's sitting there in his wheelchair. This little, like, bird of a man at this point. And, uh, and he goes, get in position, you know, get on guard. And, and the guy's like... <laughs> so he said, tell him to 
you know, get in his position, in his defensive position. And so he gets ready and he says, are you ready? Okay. Listo? Si. Yes, he's ready, master. You sure you're ready? Estas seguro que estas listo? Si. Okay. And so, he, and then he, he just goes like that. And you couldn't even see how fast he did it. He, he, went, he just flicked his hand, just moved his hand like that. And the guy's sword went flying across the room. <laughs> and he was red-faced, <laughs> right? And Bob says, well, I got the drop on you. I probably, you probably didn't see that coming. You probably weren't really ready. But go get your sword. And then it was humiliating because the guy had to walk over and get his sword. <laughs> he gets over and he goes, now you know what I'm going to do, so get in your position, you know, uh, the firmest defensive position. And this is like a big guy, a strong guy, and Bob's like this, and he's got a little shawl over his knee, and I mean, you know, little did this guy know that he had, like, taught Errol Flynn everything, and, and you know, all that. But he goes, okay, you ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Again, same thing. It was like a Yoda moment, you yeah? know? And the guy was, and then he said, Wait, before you go pick up your sword over on the other end of the room, ask him if he's willing to maybe rotate like an eighth of an inch. <laughs> and he goes, I'll, I'll try that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So good. <laughs>